Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Monday, November, November 13th at 11.44 p.m. Mountain Time, 2017. You're looking at the earthquake array in uh, Southern California today, where I reported on the 4.7 that kicked off that's been downgraded to 4.6. 22 miles... 22 kilometers northeast of Gonzales, there have been one, if we count that, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 29, 30, 6, 37, 38 aftershocks moving north. There's the two latest. This is a heads up and a rupture and a slow slip movement of earth potential to the north here. And to the west, we come out to the San Andreas. It's moving up the fault here. So we're going to be watching this. Moving on to the update. Atmospheric river it will pummel the Sierras in the biggest storm of the season so far. We're going to touch on that at the end of the video, the truth about what's happening with the weather in North America and the Canadian Shield over 200% above normal. Ever. So a roaring pineapple express is expected to bless the Sierra Wednesday and Thursday, marking the biggest storm for the season so far. This is going to bring snow above 7,500 feet everywhere. Look at that atmospheric river, folks. We're going to talk about it later. Record cold weekend in Montreal. Can the snow be far behind? Definitely not. We just saw that river coming. Temperatures across southern Quebec are slowly moderating. To start the work week after record cold Friday and Saturday, Friday was an absolute shock to the system as a record low of negative 8.9 C in Montreal, combined with howling winds over 50 kilometers per hour to produce mid-January like wind chill values. After the warm fall they had, it was a wake-up call. More cold occurred Saturday with the record of negative 9.7. Boom! beating the old record by 1.5 degrees set in 1973. Those temperatures were at Trudeau Airport on the island. It was much colder in the suburbs. Hmm. First significant snowfall of the season, hurricane force winds caused traffic chaos in Slovenia and Croatia. First significant snowfall, look at these guys, of the season and hurricane force burro winds are causing traffic, traffic chaos on roads and highways in parts of Slovenia and Croatia on Monday. Wind gusts up to 150 km per hour, that's 93 miles per hour, were measured today. Boom, that is a lot of snow drifts. Drivers were caught unprepared for that. Who goes out saying, oh, it's 100 mile an hour winds today. Guys, let's talk about the fireball over New England. Bright fireball over New York and Pennsylvania with 189 reports. Let's go to the visual. Boom. Center screen. There it is. Center screen. Oh. Center screen. Oh. Center screen. Boom. The preliminary 3G, 3D trajectory computed based on all reports. This right here. And that would be south of Rochester, somewhere in north central PA. And there's the zone of visibility and reports. Quite a wide swath of people reporting at 189 reports. Why is this significant? We report on fireballs a lot because they are, I think they're increasing uh, in their size. And there was another bright fireball over Arizona just a few days ago. And then a month ago, a bright fireball with a sonic boom. In the same area. So heads up. Moving to the nonsense section tonight, we're going to talk about some climate nonsense. This map shows the human influence on extreme weather. I call bullshit. Now, <laughs> it's hilarious what is being reported by the mainstream and what people read and absorb. Because Pittock says what the evidence is showing at the moment that's right now, is that something like 63% of extreme weather events that have been studied to date 
have shown that climate change has made them more severe or more likely. I'll let that sink in what that says. So 63% of all extreme weather events is caused by climate change. That means that 37% are, are, what are they caused by? Fairy dust and farts? Pink elephants? What the hell are they talking about? This makes no sense, and the statement makes not, that this proves nothing. What it shows is that 63% of all extreme weather events have been studied by people who got government funding for climate change, and they prove that climate change caused these extreme weather events to become severe or more likely, which, by the way, let me tell you, as a climatologist, that is impossible to determine. If anyone out there in the uh, YouTube world could send me a paper that proves where humans have influenced these events and made them more severe and where their data comes from, and if your data is coming from an IPCC report, please don't send it. This is just nonsense and words. Let's go over to more insanity. JPL scientists are working to save humanity from Yellowstone supervolcano. The way they're going to save us is by making this erupt. They don't know what they're doing. Uh, this has been going on. First NASA and now JPL. NASA talked about this cockamamie project six months ago. And now a team of scientists led by engineers at JPL is crafting an ingenious. Please replace this with ridiculous, stupid, and idiotic to diffuse a simmering supervolcano. Now, can someone please send me the data on all the diffused supervolcanoes uh, that we've uh, successfully diffused in the past? If you don't think that this is the most ridiculous and insane thing you're reading, I, I, what, is, what, are the, what is humanity doing? What are the people doing in this world where they can read this and being like, oh, JPL is going to defuse the supervolcano. I'm so happy. Thank you, J JPL. Thanks, JPL. I can't. I wonder if they'll still allow uh, Old Faithful to erupt. I wonder. It gets crazy. Nibiru predictor claims North Korea will bomb Yellowstone and trigger a nuclear winter. Uh, I don't think that Nibiru predictor, that North Korea is going to trigger a nuclear winter. I think the Jet Propulsion Laboratory is going to trigger a nuclear winter. I'll leave links to all this nonsense that people read on a daily basis. Oh, let's talk about the reality. Here's a snow forecast for where I live for Thursday through Friday. That's the whole state. We're still weeks out from winter. Five weeks in a day till the winter solstice. The atmosphere is playing favorites, however, during the grand solar minimum. Consistent with how our predictions, snow is piling up in the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies. The base depth at most ski resorts in these areas is 150 to 250 percent of average. And another one to three feet of snow will likely fall from November 13th to November 20th. Thanks to this atmospheric river that's coming in. Let's talk the short-term forecast. Plentiful snow in the northwest and northern Rockies so far. It's the middle of fall. Hello, Jackson Hole, November 12th. The orange line on the base step tracker shows the depth of natural snowfall at Jackson Hole is approaching record numbers. Coming in at 242% of average. Boom! I could heli-ski this right now. Oh, before Thanksgiving. <laughs> Snowpack is 242% of average on November 12, 2017. There are the facts. Do you hear anyone reporting this? I don't think so. Further north at Big Sky, Montana, there is equally crazy snow scene. <laughs> Look at that. This is no, a big sky on the 12th. Base depth tracker for big sky shows 191% of average. 191% of average in big sky. 
These are big numbers, and they're only going to get deeper. If you want to follow the base step tracker, I'll leave you links to this because it is epic. Now, guys, those out there that don't know about the albedo effect, the entire Canadian shield is covered in white. This goes all the way up to the Arctic Circle. This is reflecting the sun back into space. It is cooling the planet as I'm speaking to you right now. If you don't understand what's happening in the grand solar minimum, this increased snow cover here, which is record, is now cooling the planet at a record rate. And it just started a few weeks ago. And this is just the beginning of the drop-off. Here we are live. It's going away and away and away. For two more years, it's going to get worse and worse before our very eyes, and we're reporting on it here live, the facts, so you can follow it. The pink and the uh, purple here, 16 inches or more. The light pink is 24 or more. The entire Canadian shield is covered in white and is now reflecting sun every time it comes up in the morning back into space, cooling the earth. So it goes all the way down into Pennsylvania. And then we're five weeks out from winter. This comes from Shepard and Zarkova. Zarkov. Here's the predicted data for cycle 25 and 26. Now, you can extrapolate what's happening now with the snowpack and put it here and here and here and here and here and here, increasing in intensity because of the decreasing intensity of our sun. So as the sun's output decreases through the next two or three solar cycles in your lifetime, we're going to see 20-foot snowpack in the Sierras at the bottom of this cycle in November. And that's just based on the facts. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so now. Check out our Patreon page and give us support. The last five videos we've made have been demonetized as usual. It's a heads up. They don't want you to know the truth. Be safe, everyone.